Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to start a reading vlog because it is mid-month book bash. I know, that snuck right up on us. <laughs> Definitely snuck up on me. So I just wanted to film a brief clip here before I start work for the morning and uh, just say what I'm going to be reading this weekend. I don't really have any set goals. I have a lot going on. It is graduation and wedding time in my life. I have had graduation um, related events on this past Sunday, Wednesday, last night, tonight, tomorrow, day off on Sunday, and then next weekend is a very big wedding. So I have a lot going on socially, which means that I won't have as much time for reading, but I still am going to obviously be making reading a priority this weekend because it is mid-month book bash. So I am working on, my audiobook is Cushiel's Avatar by Jacqueline Carey. Um, I'm only about halfway through this and it's like, I don't know, 40 some hours long on audiobook. It's a really thick fantasy novel. It's the third book in the trilogy, uh, the original Cushiel's trilogy. Um, I'm in a very exciting part right now in the middle of the book. So uh, yeah, I probably will be listening to that today. I do have to be out in the field later on. So I will be listening to that today to and from and excited for that. My ebook is one that I'm hoping to finish today. I am reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry with my romance buddy readers, Doris and Katie, and absolutely in love with this book. I mean, I have never read any Emily Henry before, but it is so good. The dialogue is awesome. I just love the storyline so much. All the characters are fabulous. Um, yeah, I just can't say enough good things about that book. Uh, the hype is real. The hype is real on that one. And then my other ebook is one that I've just barely started. I'm only, you know, just a few chapters into it. It's The Me the Menopause Manifesto by Jennifer Gunter. And uh, it should be obvious to anyone why somebody my age would be reading The, Me the Menopause Manifesto. <laughs> um, and then for Caribathon, I am reading Small Island by Andrea Levy, Levy, Andrea Levy with uh, Patrice... Karen from Run Right Reads and Doris. Uh, we normally read nonfiction in that buddy reading group, but we've decided to pick this one up for Caribathon and I'm only the first like 30 pages into it, but already very intrigued by this historical storyline, um, which features two couples from um, one white from England and then the other from Jamaica, black couple from Jamaica. And it is takes place right after... Um, there seems to be two storylines. One storyline takes place right after World War II. And then the other storyline is before that time. So interested to get more into that one this weekend and see what I think about that. And then for my presidential biographies, I am reading The President and the Assassin, McKinley, Tara, and the Empire at the Dawn of the American Century by Scott Miller. Um, I have already read one biography of um, McKinley, but it was quite dry and dense. And so I picked this one up to get more more McKinley and so far so good. I'm about 50 pages in and this one is much better written, much more engaging, really interesting. I love the way that it's framed with the assassination at the very beginning <laughs> and then going back in time and seeing how we got to the assassination. So that's what I'll be working on this weekend. Hopefully I will get some reading done, but we shall see. But uh, I will check back in with you as I go.
Hey friends, I wanted to check in. It is Sunday, day three of the Mid-Month Book Bash, and <clears throat> I didn't check in yesterday, and you may be able to see uh, on this camera why yesterday I, um, I had been weeding my garden yesterday afternoon, and I got bit up pretty badly um, by <clears throat> black flies, and I am still suffering from uh, a little bit of a reaction to them. They're quite swollen and hot still to take some Benadryl and knock myself out last night. So that was fun. So I didn't really want to get on camera last night, but I figured I'd get on here today and check in because Friday night before I went to bed, I finished Book Lovers by Emily Henry. And I love that book. It is a five-star read for me. I will certainly be reading more Emily Henry. I've already ordered uh, Beach Read to try. Um, <clears throat> and so... Uh, I know it's been all over booktube and you don't need me to probably summarize it for you, but just in case, it is the story of Nora and Charlie, two high-powered uh, bookish type people, very type A, very um, work-centered in their lives. Uh, Nora is a, an agent, a book agent, and Charlie is an editor, and they are sort of, um, <clears throat> not really rivals, but they, they've met in work related ways in the past and they haven't really gotten along they wind up being um in the same place for an extended period of time and realizing that they have more in common than they thought and um uh, i just love this story i thought it was wonderful the dialogue is just a plus a plus dialogue between Nora and charlie i love that aspect of it this book is is gently and lovingly making fun of a lot of romance tropes, particularly the trope of the big city slicker headed to a small town and the, um, you know, <clears throat> falling in love in the small town. So if you like those kind of Hallmark type movies, um, this book is sort of gently making fun of some of those tropes, but in a very loving way. Um, so I just thought it was just delightful. Um, I can't say enough about it. Nora's relationship with her sister Libby, that's another big aspect of the story um, because they grew up with a single mom in New York City and the mom died. And when um, Nora was 20 and her little sister Libby was 16. And so it's their story of growing up, you know, together um, and what what family expectations can do, the expectations you put on yourself and the expectations others have of you and what that means in your life. Um, Charlie is dealing with similar issues with his family and I just love that aspect of the story as well. It's not just about Charlie and Nora's relationship. There's a lot of other stuff going on here and it was all wonderful and funny. I laughed, I cried. It just was the best reading experience. I just loved it. <clears throat> I've also been reading... This book, Small Island by Andrea Levy for Curbathon, and it's also a buddy read. Um, I am on page 89 of this, so I've read, you know, the first little bit of it. And this is historical fiction. We're following um, a couple of characters, Hortense and Gilbert, who are Jamaican and who have traveled to England for, to try to uh, have a they think better life, but at least a different life than what they would have in Jamaica. Um, and so far up to page 89, we've basically gotten Hort, um, Hortense's, uh, is that her name? <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes, Hortense. Um, we've basically gotten her backstory, her childhood and what brought her to London. So I very much am enjoying this. I think it's very, very well written, and I'm very interested in these characters, invested in these characters, and want to find out what happens to them. And I'm really enjoying this time period. This is the time period right after, um, right before and right after World War II, um, and uh, that is a time period that I'm particularly interested in in terms of a generation called the Windrush Generation, the people who immigrated from islands in the Caribbean to England after World War II. So looking forward to getting into that a little bit more. I've also read in each of the other books that I talked about um, when I first started this vlog, but I haven't gotten very far into any of them. So I won't, I won't bring, I won't discuss those in detail right now, but I will be discussing them as uh, we go on in the vlog. And I have been making a little bit of progress in each of those. So feel good about that. Um, let's hope I can make some more forward progress in the last day and a half of the Mid-Month Book Bash. So I've been reading The Menopause Manifesto by Jennifer Gunter most of the afternoon. I mean, in between doing <laughs> chores, I've been reading The Menopause Manifesto. And I'm reading it on an ebook, so I'll put a picture up here. Um, 
And I am really getting a lot out of this book. I mean, it is obvious what the book is about from the title, uh, but it's written in a very um, conversational style. So it's very easy, easy to digest. And the author is also very much a feminist. So she's approaching this discussion of women's health um, during the menopause period uh, from a feminist perspective. And I really appreciate her examples of things that we as women sort of have unconsciously um, put in our own brains from culture and from society telling us, you know, things like, uh, you know, basically after menopause, women are not useful in society anymore because basically, you know, our our, patriarch our patriarchal society has determined that women are only useful for sex and having babies. So once you can no longer do those things, you're of no use any longer. So I appreciate her like constant referencing, like if we were to talk about this particular condition from a male perspective, we never would because our society isn't set up that way. And so I appreciated that a lot of the things that are considered really, um, detrimental about menopause are simply conditioning, right? Uh, societal, cultural conditioning that we've all like sort of just unconsciously gotten stuck in our brains from how we don't talk about things like menopause and other types of women-centered health issues. So I really appreciate that kind of a perspective. And her, each chapter in this book talks about a particular symptom of the menopause transition and the menopause transition is like the, the entire period from when you start your you know pre-menopausal you're in perimenopause and perimenopause until you get to menopause and then after menopause um and so that all of the very variety of symptoms that you can experience during that time period she discusses each one in its own separate chapter and she goes through you know myths and what is scientifically based and what we actually know based on science and research and what treatments are available and what things do not need treatment because we've only decided that they're problems because of societal conditioning. So I think it's a really excellent, straightforward, honest, um, just, you know, down to earth way to discuss this issue of women's health. And I very much appreciate the tone and the approach of this book. And so therefore, it was easy to sit down this afternoon and read 50% of this book already because it just it just flows so easily and it's very um, informative and very interesting. And I've learned a lot already. So and I will say that, um, you know, something that I've particularly noticed as I've aged is this brain fog thing. And a lot of it can be put, you know, a lot of it we put down to stress. And during time, COVID times, you know, maybe you think that it's a, a symptom of of having a virus or something like that. But uh, brain fog is a real thing that people experience as they age. Um, and women in particular experience during the menopause transition. And I just, when reading that chapter, I thought, it, I found it very helpful in that um, it was discussed just as, you know, it's just a normal thing. And it, and most of the time for women, it's just a temporary thing. And so it's not something to be concerned about. Like <laughs> for most people, it's not a sign of early onset um, dementia or something like that. So, you know, there's a lot in this book that sort of helps ease anxiety and fear about what may come as well as what you're currently experiencing. So I appreciate that very much. And I think it's a really, really useful book. Um, and so I would encourage any of you that are out there who are either the same age that I am, middle-aged, or you're, you know, going to be there someday, or you've already been through this, this period of your life. Like, I think there's a lot of really helpful information um, to be gained from this book. So yeah. Um, like I said, I'm only 50% of the way through it. So of course something could happen before I finish the end to, you know, before I reach the end, that would make me change my mind. But at this point, um, I think it is a book that, uh, would be highly useful for most people. <music> It 
it's Monday morning and I just wanted to check in on my progress on The President and the Assassin, McKinley, Tara, and Empire at the Dawn of the American Century by Scott Miller. This is the second book that I have read about President McKinley and this one is much more successful, at least so far. It's a 350 page book and I'm on page 125 or thereabouts. And what is interesting about this is it starts off in the very first chapter discussing President McKinley's assassination by an anarchist um, as he's, you know, attending, I think, a World's Fair or something um, at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York in 1901. So it starts right out with the assassination. Um, and then we go backwards in time and we have dual timelines where it the book is discussing what happens in the lead up to this assassination, what happens with this uh, Leon... Kazol's, Kazolgas, I'm butchering that name, I'm quite sure, but um, the guy's first name is Leon, so let's just go with that. Uh, so what led up to him um, deciding that he needed to assassinate the president? And then it also discusses um, McKinley's term in office as president and what's happening. So there's a, right now we're in the part of the story where McKinley is trying to force Spain to leave Cuba and we've just, uh, the, the main has exploded and so now we're uh, going to war with Spain in Cuba and also the Philippines because God knows why would we pass up an opportunity to just like take a country that we think would be useful to us. <laughs> Imperialism, yay. Um, and the alternate storyline, this Leon character, um, and it talks about, with that storyline, is talking all about labor unrest at the end of the 1800s in the United States, workers organizing to try to get better conditions, uh, fewer hours, better pay, just more humane working conditions. And what that was all about in the United States and how that um, efforts to gain more humane employment situations led to the um, rise in anarchist movements in the United States. And that's what this Leon guy ends up getting um, involved in. So super interesting in terms of the history of the, the time of the United States in the late 1800s, right around the turn of the century. Um, I This is written very, very well. It's very engaging um, and it's more fast paced than your typical biography. It's not just a dry recitation of facts. It is a story that we're being told. Um, it's not as good as like, say, an Eric Larson. Um, it's not as smooth as that, but it is definitely not a dry and boring biography. So very much pleased that I've picked this one up. Um, I because the last McKinley biography was dry and boring. So this one, this one's being uh, going along much more successfully. <laughs> It's about time for me to wrap up the mid-month book bash uh, vlog here. So I just want to check in one last time. I did finish one more book tonight. I finished The, Man the Menopause Manifesto by Jen, Jen Gunter. It says here on the front, own your health with facts and feminism. Um, I thought this was really well done, very conversational in style. Um, I did skip over some chapters uh, or just scan through them because they weren't relevant to me. Uh, so I think this is a book that you don't need to read like every single word. Um, there's chapters, like the chapters are broken up by topic area. So you can definitely pick out the chapters that are most relevant to you in your questions or your needs or whatever. Um, I think it's just filled with a lot of really good information. There is uh, her um, her recommendations are evidence-based, you know, based on science and not, you know, always saying, you know, if something sounds too good to be true, then it probably is and you should probably look into it a little bit more. Um, so I found this book to be very, very helpful and I'm glad that I read it. Of the other books that I picked up, there were five books um, in total that I wanted to work on this weekend. So I finished two. I finished Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I finished The Menopause Manifesto. So that's two down. I'm sorry, I have cat hairs all over me because I was petting the cat and now I'm covered. 
Um, I did listen to my audiobook, Kushiel's Avatar. I'm about 72% of the way through that one now. I was at about 50% when the weekend started, so that's good. That's a third book in a fantasy trilogy by Jacqueline Carey, which I really love. It's a reread for me. Um, can't really talk about it because it's the third book in a series. And then I also read uh, the next section in Small Island by Andrea Levy, which is my Cribathon read. And um, so I've read through page 89. I need to get back to this and read some more so I can check in again with my buddies. And I've also been doing quite a bit of reading in The President and the Assassin by Scott Miller. I, when I started this weekend, I think I was on page 90. And I'm currently on page... 225. So yeah, I only have about, I think 125 pages left to go in this one. It's really reading quickly. I am amazed at how quickly this one's reading considering the last McKinley biography I read. So this one's definitely much more highly recommended by me. Um, so yeah, very successful mid-month book bash again this time. Um, I got a lot of reading done, which I'm surprised at considering how busy I've been over the weekend. You can see uh, my bug bites are all doing well. So that I've weathered that storm as well. Uh, I hope you've all had a wonderful mid-month book bash. I hope you found some good books to read and I will talk to you later.